very reason that the level of dishonor was increasing. So, Ron, I, I believe the short answer for you is to proceed with the national uh, letters that you've done uh, because at the court level, um, there is a complete disrespect. Now, you still have a number of things uh, up your sleeve, and that is that if you stay in honour and you stay honourable and be conscious of that you can object, conscious that you do not have to accept any offer they make, that it's going to be a hard road for them to ultimately put anything over you. But I think it's time to avoid laying siege to the court on this and to pursue the perfection of the EDP process with the national officials, which is the process that we're pursuing at the moment. Uh, so that's my short answer for you. Now, um, let me get back to some of the questions, uh, other questions that have come into the uh, uh, chat. And I hope I'm answering the questions that you're raising effectively, people. So hopefully, uh, hopefully I am answering the questions that you, you're asking um, appropriately. Uh, um, okay. Uh, Nogar, Nogarats asks, uh, do you have a PayPal account? Um, yes, there is a PayPal account there, Nogarats, and, and let me just tell you what it is. I don't normally ask for donations, uh, but seeing how you ask, I'll find it here and I'll put it in. Um, there, there are a number of reasons why I don't ask for donations. One is that at the end of the day, we'll have a currency system up. It's not there yet. Uh, the second is it's very easy for people, very easy for people to say, ah, oh, it's just done for money, it's just done for personal benefit, uh, and wanted to absolutely avoid those. Um, I'm looking for the name of the PayPal account here. Um, it's uh, Eucadia Books is the PayPal account, UCA DIA Books. Um, but I can't see it up here on the list, so I'm sorry I can't give it to you at the moment, but you can email frank.ocollins at ukaya.com and I'll find the, the name of the, of the, uh, of the UK account, of the PayPal account. Um, okay. Questions. Other questions? Okay. Let's have a look. I'm just having a look through. I'm just scanning through. I'm looking, if a question, if it says question at the front, that's what I'm looking for. Um, Okay, questions. Okay, Kamari, I think I hope I said that right. Kamari says, wouldn't a writ of error take their judgment to a higher court if or when they dishonour any presentment and appeal? That's right. We haven't done the writs yet. Uh, we need, in order to create a cause of action, we need a form of action. In other words, the, the great writs need to be perfected. And I'm, again, I'm so sorry to all of you that the great wits are not ready yet <clears throat> and it's and I'm very conscious that this is an urgent matter and Ron I know this is an urgent matter for you let me jump on them but I've been working day and night to get the currency running on the background that I promised and I keep promising on the great wits let me get those in line so those great wits can be used for the very reason that Kamari very intelligently says that we can use them as a matter of bringing the matter to a higher court. Um, guest, <coughs> okay, question. Yeah, is any good returning all documents to the sender as a form of no contract? Look, I, I know there's an argument by people that if you return a document that it's no contract, they do it to us, and it works for a while, but they've got a million different tricks up their sleeve. Uh, they will um, they will date letters past the expiry date and send them to you. Uh, they will claim to have sent mail that they don't send. And one of their great ones, the one I love, is that they'll post in what they claim is a public space a notice 
uh, or a deed, and usually, and I don't think they even do this, but they've got their um, notice boards in the clerk's office, and you're expected to go, you're expected in their system to have gone in every day because you've got nothing better to do and keep checking, checking all the different places they can put notices. So I, I would suggest not to go down the road of playing the game of simply returning documents because if you're going to play games of trickery, then you're dealing with the masters if you're dealing with the private bar. And they'll win on experience every single time. In other words, I, I would suggest that you face the situation and start looking at the remedies that we're talking about. Uh, contracting, look, one of the great lies they say to us is, once you contract, that's it. Well, <clears throat> if you have been tricked into agreeing, if you've been tricked into consenting, then do you have the right to withdraw your consent? Yes, you do. Of course you do. Will they tell you that you can do that? Of course they won't. Do they want you to withdraw it? Of course they don't. So what they'll tell you is, oh, oh you've, you've signed on the dotted line. It's like some dodgy car salesperson, with great respect to people who sell cars, but it's like someone in those kind of stereotypical things. You sign it, that's it, too bad. No, if you were tricked, you have every right to withdraw your consent and every right to render your previous consent null and void. So don't worry about this contracting thing. That's a rabbit hole. Contracting, not contracting. What's more important is knowing the importance of your word and simply saying, I do not consent, or signing V coactus. Go and have a look, please. I say to everyone on the call, go and have a look at the extensive notes on one-heaven.org and see the range of remedy available to you. And V coactus is extremely important. It is the ability to say that if you are forced to sign, if you go into a sheriff's lockup, I assure you, you want to sign in. Because if you don't sign in, normally what happens is that they'll put you in isolation. Sometimes they'll taser you or worse. So when you put V full stop, C full stop first, and then sign on top of that second, then you've made it known that any signature in a sign-in did not consent to what took place. Now, the, the people who are at these centres are now trained that the second anyone flinches or contests, they have the absolute right to taser you, beat you, strap you down and put you in isolation, basically to torture you. So I suggest, strongly suggest to everyone don't play the game of contracting and certainly don't play that game with highway patrol and police. I mean, the, the police now are absolutely trained that the second anyone gives them lip, you know, you have no authority, da 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 they have every right to deploy their tasers. And they do. So please, it's got nothing to do with that anymore. You have every right to withdraw your consent if you've been tricked. And uh, if you've been receiving documents, I would certainly open them, open them and, and see what they are. Um, I think if you've already gone to the first hearing and it was continued, can the executive letter still be sent? Absolutely, guest 58. If you have not entered a plea, if no plea has been established, then the role of the executor has not been firmed. The answer is yes. Please, you have every right, guest 58, to use the executive letter. Uh, Wild Thing Magic says, um, I am negotiating divorce property settlement with Centre Care as mediator. Go to court for final decision. Um, I appear to be cut off. Can no longer hear Frank. Uh, okay. Sorry, um, Wild Thing Magic. You'll have to um, retype it in because I missed the rest of your question there, what you're saying. Charlie54 says, question, hi Frank, at this point in time, can one use this system uh, with the personal trust to protect one's asset against the present system? Yes, you can, um, knowing what you're dealing with. Yes, you can, absolutely. But will that stop them? The system is going to go through throes of, of final desperation. So I would 
I would expect to see more examples of lawlessness appearing. And I hope none of them occur with, with any of you. But the short answer is yes, you have the ability to protect your assets. You absolutely have the ability to protect your assets. But um, uh, as far as the mechanics of that for you through your login and a password, we haven't deployed the workbenches yet because we haven't turned on all the features of the money yet because we haven't presented all the rules of how the money system works yet. So we're in that kind of transitional phase at the moment, Charlie, 954. Uh, what I'd suggest is, is if you've got a specific question of how to use it, fire it through. Otherwise, I just ask, in fact, this is probably better for me, I ask for your, no pun intended, I ask for indulgence uh, over the next few weeks just to finish what we're doing. And if you can wait that long, that would be great before um, firing me any questions because then we can show you how you administer your trusts, as you administer your bank account, as you administer your money, as you administer your records on the register, all through your login. Um, Mammy says, when entering the court to establish standing, do you stay standing when the judge comes in and, and avoid claiming the name? Well, this was a bit, this was asked a bit earlier. Um, Oh, and the question continues, and stay out in the audience and not go past the swinging doors, like this truth tells you. Yes, okay. Number one, do you stand? I'm a great believer in, in not creating controversy by showing dishonour. If I was a judge and I didn't see you stand, then um, I would consider that a dishonour. So I would stand, only because there's no point in rubbing their nose in it. Uh, is it a custom to stand? Yes. Does it mean that you've suddenly consented to everything and guilty? Da 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 da. No, it doesn't. It's minor. But to me, it, it, there's no point in coming across as belligerent and arrogant. So that's why I would, um, I would personally, I would stand. Does it make a difference one way or the other? No, it doesn't. Um, avoid claiming the name. Yes. Name in jurisdiction is three things they want to establish. They want to establish personal territorial and subject matter. Personal is merely are you on their register? So that's by the name. They simply all they have to do is say is your name Franco Collins? Once you say yes, they've established personal jurisdiction. So yes, avoid claiming the name. Do you stay out in the audience and not go past the casino doors? Yes, you do not ever enter the inner sanctum of the court until they call you and until you settle the terms. I enter the bar as holder of my own title when you're called to the um, table inside. You never go in there because then any presumption of you standing there uh, is automatically validated by you being there. Again, I know it's trickery. It's all trickery with them. But yes, you don't enter until you uh, do that. Now you don't stand there at the bar having a long debate with the judge. That's not the point. The point is that you enter when called on the on the statement by you as you enter. Uh, I enter the bar as holder of my own title, and then you move in. You don't even give the judge the opportunity to debate that. You've moved in as a matter of fact. But the judge then knows. I mean, everyone knows when you do that. When you when you do that in that court that you're not going to simply be a happy little slave that rolls over so they can make money off you. Um, okay, questions. Uh, Befredo 4 says, are court appearances that are pending against people who have or are gaining this knowledge able to be listed somewhere so we can attend? That is a really good question, Befredo 4. And what I'd say is, as the communities are established and constituted, then one of the roles of a community is, in fact, as a grand jury. And in places where a grand jury, being a tribunal of jury, uh, is recognised, this has significance. Until then, it's a logistical nightmare to be sending out emails and and 
and some people